Welcome to the first of two of the biggest Little League World Series games of the season. We are in the Midwest Regional today where the champions of Missouri and the state champions of North and South Dakota get together where a win puts them in a very good spot. Not many teams left in the Midwest, all striving to get to Saturday and the championship game Kearney, Nebraska, Johnston, Iowa will play tomorrow in the elimination game. The two teams at the top have yet to lose. Hi, everyone. I'm Jim Barber. This is John Gregory. And what's at stake? Well, the winner goes immediately to the championship game. And if that winner comes through in that game, it's on the Williamsport. You've been in these type of games before, John, both as a player and now watching them as an announcer. What should we be watching for today that might be pivotal? Well, probably what I feel up here for these kids is a lot of nerves. You know, they know that if they win this game, they're just that one step closer to get into that Little League World Series. So um, neither team has lost yet, so they've got some room and some wiggle room here, but it's going to be an interesting matchup today. I love the matchup we have. And for Webb City, Missouri, keep your eyes today on Dupree Jackson against Nebraska late. He had a two-run hit that was key. Yeah, both of the guys we're going to highlight here are very athletic. You can see Dupree Jackson. Jackson, both the guys there, swings through the zone really quick. One for three, a couple RBI, but we're going to see Dupree Jackson on the mound today. One of the reasons why he's on the mound is that athletic ability he has there as you see him leg out the triple. On the other side, Marcus Phillips. We're not going to see him on the mound today. He had 12 Ks against Minnesota. He's ineligible to pitch today. He's going to play first base, but that's still a good thing. Two for four, three RBIs, another athlete that has really quick hands through the zone. It's going to be fun to watch these two guys bat today. It's going to be a great battle. And if anything, John, was indicative of what might happen today, it was yesterday's four games. All four came down to the final inning and run production or one run finishes. Missouri, North South Dakota next for the right to get to the championship. South Dakota, the home team, and today we'll start with Ethan Bruns on the mound, a hard-throwing right-hander. And his boss, manager Jeff Riley, says, I want to see mostly fastballs from this guy. We just don't like to throw a whole lot of curves. That's exactly true. Jeff Riley said, I've got 1A, 1B, 1C. He didn't even say who A, B, and C was. He just says, I'll run any one of those guys out there. Good fastball. He says he has a little bit of a cutter. He'll show the breaking ball just for an off-speed pitch, but he'll also work in a changeup. He'll face Cy Darnell to start the game, who's been two for four in this regional. Then Dupree Jackson, the hero from the other day. Max Stovern, who is not uh, an easy out. He walked four times in the most recent game. Evan Freeman in the fourth spot. Then Kyler Perry, Walker Sweet, Kenley Hood is seventh. Eli Miller bats eighth and Landon Johnson at the third base spot. Rounds it out. Big games today, all teams undefeated, and here we go. Nick Boylan is the home plate umpire. Jake Ballard at first, Phil King at second, Prince Lowe at third, and all umpires volunteering their time and efforts toward Little League Baseball. Sky toward right field. Goes as a long strike, two outs. You almost expected Jackson Grevin good to get to that one after the way he played the other night with two splendid plays. It's funny you say that. I was thinking the same thing. Isn't that how the last game started with Grevin good making a great catch out in right field and then ending the ball game with a walk-off base hit up the middle? Maybe it's meant to be that this is his regional. Yeah, absolutely. Up the middle, base hit. Darnell's third hit of the tournament. And the young guy who favors the Boston Red Sox and likes to get up early in the morning. He's got that bat going early this morning. I like one of those. I like the Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> in from the east, of course. And you see it right back up the middle. That's where you want to hit it. Good start for this Missouri team. Why not get, get on the board early? You got a very good South Dakota defense out there, and they're going to put some pressure on it. One thing that Tad Johnson told us about this Missouri team is they can be aggressive to a fault on that base pass, so they want to take advantage of anything they can. Brings up 42, Dupree Jackson wears the Jackie Robinson number proudly. Back of his jersey. Ball gets away from the catcher, runner on the second base. Goes a passed ball. So 
Webb City not wasting much time. Man in scoring position, nobody out. With his team down the other day, 2-0. Jackson had that two-run triple that John highlighted in the beginning of our show and then scored what turned out to be the winning run. And William Dupree Jackson draws a walk. Here's Max Stovern. Would you have your number three guy, Bunny? Not early in the ball game. I think he got an opportunity to maybe put some big numbers on the board early with no outs here. Late in the game, strategy changes a bit. I like the fact that in the first inning here, see if you can get out to a good lead if possible. Comes from a very, very talented family. His mom, Ashton, is an artist. And Max threw a no-hitter in Travel League play. Consider that to be his best highlight to date. Ball and two strikes. Pretty good highlight. Anytime you can throw a no-hitter. We've heard no-hitters, perfect games in the state championship. A lot of good things happening for these kids out here. They've carried it on. This has been one of the best played regionals, I think, that we've seen over the last few years here. And then you have a game in the Indiana State Finals, out of the zone, 26-21, Indiana over Wabash. How in the world do you explain <laughs> that? <laughs> Indiana team that scored 100 runs in the state championship total games weren't able to put very many runs on the board here and they go home after two ball games which was a big surprise to the locals here yeah had a lead last night against Michigan couldn't hold it 2-2 two -two. now 3-2 Evan Freeman the center fielder bats next base is loaded Back-to-back -back walks for the cleanup hitter, Freeman. And Jeff Riley, the manager of South Dakota, is going to try to get a handle on this. Not the type of start he anticipated with Ethan Bruns. So in the pitches you've seen so far, what's the problem? Just missing, and we've seen it over and over. Regardless, you're, you've got your one A, B, and C guys out on the mound. This is his first opportunity to get a start out here. Sometimes you want to overthrow, or you tend to overthrow a little bit in that first inning. And I think good visit to the mound by Jeff Riley just to calm him down. The guy with the experience knows how to throw strikes. Just a matter of setting down, settling down, let your defense try to play behind you. Sometimes the best thing is letting the guys hit the ball. Here's Big E. Evan Freeman, not eligible to pitch today, but certainly in position to hit. Toward first base, they'll go home for the force. One out. Good play in the right play by Marcus Phillips to Cohen Henry. Base runners move up. It remains scoreless. Got to be ready at the corner for a quick shot down here. He, Marcus Phillips was playing in on the grass. Got a nice hop that time. Forced out at the plate, an easy throw. And that's part of letting your defense play behind you. Such a good defense for South Dakota. You don't mind them hitting the ball sometime. Looks up Kyler Perry, who turned 13 years of age on the 1st of July. Oh, by the way, he hit a home run on his birthday. Just like it's scripted. Toward right field, base hit. It'll score one. Runner around third, heading to home plate. Throw is not in time. 2 nothing, Missouri. Base hit solid out to Grevin Good in right field. You can see the head down on the ball. He drives it out there. Grevin Good, a great fielder out in right field. 
The relay throw went to the second baseman. I think that's what allowed the runner to come around and score there. It wasn't straight to the plate. He's got a good enough arm to get it there. The combination uh, short uh, outfield to second baseman to home, not in time. Walker Reed Sweet steps to the plate. He's the catcher. Six man to bat in the inning. And now on the overthrow, it's 3-0. Throw to third to try to cut down the runner, and he is safe. And Webb said he is running the bases with that aggressiveness, John, you talked about, and taking advantage. Uh, maybe some nerves on the part of South Dakota. No question. Tad Johnson, before the game, we said they've got a pretty solid defense. Are you aggressive on the base pass? He said, to a fault we are at times. So that the, the late steal here, trying to force the catcher to do something, and that's Perry running to second base. And because of that, the overthrow, Freeman comes in easily, and Perry's able to make it to third base. That's the aggressiveness on the pass that Missouri wanted to have coming into this game. Walker Sweet still at the plate in the infield in, and he's hit by a pitch. Great start for Missouri and a nightmare beginning for South Dakota. Will be interesting to see how this South Dakota team really handles some adversity here in the first inning. Couple runs given up, still one out first and third. This is a team that has not lost since this team has been put together in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So we'll see how they handle the pressure. K. Hood at the plate, Kenley Hood. And going down to second base, Walker Sweet. So runners at second and third. Talked to Kenley's dad today, proud papa of his Missouri first baseman. Toward third, runner frozen. Now he'll try to come home. Safe at first, runner scores, four nothing. And right now, South Dakota can't buy an out. Phillips was pulled off the bag. Jim, you know when you talk about things are speeding up a little bit right now, so that's what it seems like for this defense for South Dakota. A ball hit to Riley down at third base. Never really got his eyes over on the runner at third base, Perry. Probably had an opportunity maybe there to get him, but decides to go to first base, Marcus Phillips misplaces with his foot down the first base bag. Now again, still first and third and another run on the board. Well, a special pinch runner. And William Hayes will step in. And he'll run for Kenley Hood. Still just one out. Well, if you're South Dakota, as Hood takes second base with no throw, if you're South Dakota, you have to recognize that as big a game as this is, this is not an elimination game. Infield in, try to choke off another run. Two strikes. Uh, Eli Miller. Landon Johnson, who bats ninth, would be next. Sinning began with a base hit, then back-to-back -back walks, a force out at home plate. Kyler Perry got a two-run hit to right, then a hit batsman. Runner scoring on a wild pitch. Now the second out of the inning, and before that, an infield hit that scored the fourth run. Two outs, here's Landon Johnson. I think for South Dakota, getting out of this inning right now with four runs on the board. At least they get back in the dugout, if at all possible, and kind of regroup and say, we've still got six at bats to be able to fight this bat. Try to put some runs on the board quickly. It'll be important inning for them to try to at least get a number on the board. Makes you wonder if we're going to see a high scoring game here. We haven't seen that many of them in this tournament. A lot of good pitching. Two balls, no strikes. Ethan Bruns in a four run hole. Ball three. And he's reached 30 pitches. 
which means that this right his day is going to be very short. Two outs, runners at second and third. And the ninth man to bat in the order at the plate. Count even is up at two and two. The leadoff hitter, Cy Darnell, is in the on deck circle. Two, two pitch. Toward right field. Inning over. But a big inning for Missouri. Nine to the plate and Kyler Perry with the big blow, a two run single to right field. After a half inning, Missouri four and South Dakota coming up. John, look at that cutie on the left. I, I think she's got a sister that almost looks just like her. Yeah. Twin, and now you give her one bite, she's not going to let up. She's going to keep going ah, after that. There's I the other I one. I don't blame her. <laughs> Never too early for a snow cone. <laughs> All right, let's uh, set the South Dakota defense, or rather the Missouri defense, excuse me, and we'll start with the pitcher. Dupree Jackson, who is big and strong and athletic. He is, and he's got that slow, lazy delivery, and then it's quick to the plate. You can see as he fires it in here, he's fastball is a plus. He's got a curveball. Again, athletic on the mound. We saw him cover home plate to get a big out in his first appearance out on the mound. So he's athletic, feels his position well. So look at the South Dakota starting lineup. It begins with Cohen Henry, who does a great job of getting on base, then Griffin Wildy, Wildy, Marcus Phillips, Ethan Bronze, Mason Riley to hit fifth, Jack Riddell is sixth, Bo Giblin, Logan Boom, and Jackson Grevengood, the hero the other night, with a walk-off hit against Minnesota. So let's see what kind of answer South Dakota has already in a four-nothing hole. And the strategy from manager Tad Johnson is we gotta go after Henry. We cannot allow him to set the table with yet another walk. He's got four of them. All came in one game. The fact of the matter for Dupree Jackson, a little bit easier to go after him when your team puts a four spot on in the top half of the inning. So you can relax a little bit more on the mound. And at the same time, you don't want to have one of those give back innings where you took four runs, now yep, you're giving some right. of them back. Most important inning for a pitcher is after your team scores some runs that you go up there and put up a zero. Two balls, two strikes. Cohen, Michael, Henry, Coco at the plate. Strike three call. Good start for Dupree Jackson as he keeps Henry off the bases. Just a fastball in the inside corner. Here's Griffin Wildy, 0 for 3 with a run batted in and a walk. Griffin is the youngest of four kids. And in his bio, when asked who he would most like to meet, he says, first president of the United States, George Washington. <laughs> Must have studied him in school, yeah. certainly. Count goes to three balls and no strikes. Marcus Phillips would hit next. Pitch up high, ball four, four pitches. And a walk. Second time in the tournament that Wilde has walked. And here's Marcus Phillips. Now batting for South Dakota. First baseman, number five, Marcus Phillips. Marcus turned 13 years of age two weeks ago. When asked what he would do if he ever won the lottery, he said he would build a wiffle ball stadium. <laughs> I'm right with you, young man. Hey, just be the owner of the team. Yes. That's, how about that? You can own your own wiffle ball team. 
I remember Kevin Mitchell played with the champion Mets back in the 80s. That was one of his favorite sports away from the game and mm -hmm. got a number of major leaguers together on the West Coast to play it. On the bounce towards second base, they'll get the sure out at first. Two outs. So side Darnell over to Kenley Hood. That'll break up Ethan Bruns, the pitcher. Griffin Wildy now at second. Phillips pulling off this one a bit off the end of the bat here. Nice job at second base by Darnell to pick it up and get the out over at first base. Steve Phillips working in the batting cage today with the South Dakota players. And the concern was they want to get that foot out in front of them a little quicker, get those hands moving a little faster. I think the bats have been a little lethargic so far and that they've been swinging late. Yeah, Jeff Riley told us that the other day. He was noticing that his right-handed hitters were hitting a lot of balls right off the first base dugout, trying to get some quicker hands through the zone. You know, you step up, come here to the regional. We started talking about how each each of these teams have a staff that can touch 70. A lot of guys will touch 70. You don't see that all year long and a little bit of an adjustment when you get here. Waste pitch by Jackson, ball and two strikes. Four nothing Missouri as Webb City batted around in the first. One, two pitch. Towards second base again, but it ain't up the second baseman. And this time around, Darnell can't feel cleanly. So the inning continues, runners at first and third, and that'll be an error. Great way to describe it, eating him up, and that was the case here. Watch this ball, kind of short hops him as an in infielder. You never want to really get that short hop or that in-between hop, and no fault to him that time. That ball took a big hop, and well, he was in a position at least to knock it down. Official score agrees with you that it was a difficult play, and so... Bruns has given his first hit of the tournament. Now it's up to Mason Riley. Runners at first and third. Strike one. Mason Douglas Riley. His ambition be a professional athlete or an orthodontist. Two strikes. Gives you a little something to fall back on, huh? If you don't reach that first goal of becoming a professional athlete. You don't think his first goal is to be an orthodontist and the backup is the... I thought he listed athlete <laughs> first and then orthodontist. I think he did. <laughs> <laughs> Strike three crawl. Inning over. Sioux Falls threatens but fails to score to the top of the order in a second with Missouri leading South Dakota 4 nothing. John F. Fathead is bigger than that little girl. <laughs> the Little League Grow the Game Grant Initiative has distributed over $2 million at the local level. Grant funding provides local Little League's resources for general improvement and to expand or establish softball, challenger division, and urban initiative programs. For more information, visit littleleague.org forward slash grow the game. Jim Barber, John Gregory, inning two. Minnesota with four in the first on three hits, aided by an error and a wild pitch with a 4-0 jump and back to the top of the lineup, Cy Darnell. You think she's proud of her big brother? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a great pitch. To third base, one hop for Riley, one out. Well, already for South Dakota, better start to the second than the first. You got to hope when they hit it, they hit it at people, and they've got a good defense behind. Again, they were stressed out a little bit in that first inning, kind of throwing the ball away. Not something that you typically see from this Sioux Falls defense, but as Missouri continued to put the pressure on them, things ratcheted up a bit, and they threw a few balls away and allowed some extra runs to come in. Dupree Jackson, the pitcher, who in the first inning walked and scored. Big fan of the Raiders. And also Bo Jackson, who spent some time with the Raiders. How can you not be a fan of Bo Jackson? Guy can play, or he could play either sport. Remember Bo Diddley in that commercial? Well, Bo, you don't know Diddley? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you Bo knew Little League too, didn't he? Wow. 
And the story's on that 30 for 30 from ESPN. I mean, the, the legend of Bo, aside from the things that actually happened that you could see on tape, mm -hmm. are even more incredible. Well, you mentioned it the other day when he was running up the wall in the outfield. Yeah. yeah. This one headed to center field base hit. And all the way now to the fence. He's around second and third. They're going to give him the sign to go ahead. And then Ted Johnson puts on the brakes. Yeah, he was tempted to come on home. And Jackson with that two-run triple the other day. Well, this looks like our highlight here. We saw him in the triple when we open this thing. And now he takes off running again. And this is why you want to go hard out of the box. You never know what's going to happen in the outfield. And Jackson takes off in a hurry and immediately makes it to third base. Good wheels. That's why they list him as slash what? Athlete slash. Yep. Max Dover, an RBI situation in South Dakota, recognizing the dilemma here. Down four, brings the infield in. That scored as a base hit for Dupree Jackson and an error on the center fielder, Griffin Wilde, allowing him to go to third. This one headed towards second. Will score to run. Batter Max Stovern out at first base on a close play. It is now 5-0 Missouri. So Stovern gets the job done. Infield playing in, but he still hit it in the right spot. No time to get him at the plate, so easy out to first base. At least get that second out, clear the bases here, and trying to get back in the dugout. Now Evan Freeman. Freeman bounced to the first baseman. Marcus Phillips in the first, who came home to get the force play. Battle of undefeated teams here, just north of Indianapolis. The winner makes it to the championship game on Saturday. The loser will have to play their way to the title game. We'll have to play on Friday prior to Saturday. That Saturday championship game is a single elimination game. Our friends Clay Matvick and Chris Burke. Clay just popped in the booth moments ago. We'll have baseball the rest of the way starting tomorrow for you on the ESPN networks. How about this matchup? Easy E versus the Big E? You're right. Is that what we have here? You know, I didn't realize the historical significance <laughs> of this. Thank you, John. <laughs> Easy E, Ethan runs on the mound, and Evan Freeman, the Big E, at the plate. This time with nobody on base. Last time he was up at the base is loaded. 47 pitches now for Ethan Bruns. Big hit off him in the first from Kyler Perry, the five hitter. Base hit center field. That one going to defense. Freeman around first and into second with a stand up double. The first inning in two thirds, John. This Web City team is impressive. It is, and up and down the line, lineup, everybody's contributing so far in this thing. As you see, the biggie able to turn on that again. Nice. Talked about getting that front foot down. There's a good example of Freeman getting that right front foot down as he drills that ball to right center field. Now to left field, good play by the third baseman Riley. Inning over. A run on two hits for Missouri, and the lead now reaches five. Middle of second, Missouri five, South Dakota nothing. We took a walk around Grand Park yesterday. Certainly one of the largest athletic facilities in the Midwest. Opened three years ago, and it's 20 miles north of Indianapolis, about 30 miles from the downtown area with 31 soccer and multi-purpose Fields, 26 baseball and softball diamonds, and use indoors for basketball and volleyball. I should say a short walk. That would take you a long time to walk around this place. It was you? short. <laughs> I was with you. <laughs> Here's Jack Riddell, the shortstop, batting in the six hole for South Dakota, already trailing 5 nothing in this game. Travis Eastman is the first base coach. Jeff Riley at third. B.J. Boom is in the dugout, serving as bench coach. 
And I think if uh, honesty compels them to say, they're probably a bit shocked at the beginning of this game. Mentioned it before, this team has got some lofty goals. Jeff Riley, as confident as any coach out here. Hit on the line to center field. Not a problem for Walker Sweet, one out. But hit well. And why not have confidence? This team's undefeated since they've been put together and they're loaded with athletes up and down. And Jeff Riley said he thought his guys could match up up and down the lineup as you see that ball lined in the center field. Missouri, Webb City, they've got a tradition though. Maybe the kids haven't been here before, but the team certainly has. Midwest champion 2015, they went on to the Little League World Series. So there's, a, there's some tradition and history there. Webb City was down in Nebraska 2-0 and it's only tournament game here. Got four in the fifth inning and just kind of held its breath over the fifth and sixth to win and make it to this game today. Bo William Giblin, 13 years of age, coming up on September the 9th. Hit his first home run in 2016. And has a favorable hitting count at three and one. Logan Boom will bat next, the left fielder. Second walk given up by Tapri Jackson. Here comes the eighth hitter, Logan Boom, wearing number 41. Stop batting for South Dakota, left fielder, 41, Logan Boom. Logan Boom was a guy that wasn't necessarily starting earlier in, for this team out of South Dakota, but he kind of earned the spot in game one and really hasn't given it up. Now, Logan was asked uh, if he won the lottery, what would he do? And he said he'd move to Florida. And play in that dome? If you win a lottery, can't you buy part of Florida? <laughs> well, he's going to play in that wiffle ball dome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that Marcus Phillips is going to build. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? You know, that's that's perfect. Yeah, one wants to build the dome with the with the money, a wiffle ball. Why not play, <laughs> play there and put it in Florida? These are good dreams. <laughs> I love it. Over the 30 pitch mark is Dupree Jackson with one out here in the second inning and already put out to a five nothing lead. Base hit left field. Runner around second is going to have the better run come back so it's station to station baseball and another threat for South Dakota. The other night in the bottom of the sixth inning with the bases loaded. Game tied at one. Jackson Grevengood, chance to be the hero. That's exactly what he was. Up the middle on the first pitch from Jack Koenig. Game over, a walk-off win for South Dakota 2-1. to one. And only fitting because Jackson was so good in the outfield and actually probably saved the game defensively that he would have a chance to be a hero. And a dangerous hitter at the number nine spot in the lineup. I love him in this spot here. He's got really good speed at the bottom half of this. It really kind of equals it out. You said great defensive player and a clutch. Clutch hit for him. Bryce Darnell is the pitching coach for Webb City. Now go over to Simons and checking with his pitcher, Dupree Jackson. Another opportunity for South Dakota, which had two aboard in the first inning, but failed to score when Riley struck out. In at the corners, double play depth at short and second. Strike one. Grevin good behind, taking two strikes. He's one for five in the regional. With two runs scored, we will go back to the top of the lineup if we get to that point and Cohen Henry next. Great pitches, two outs. Third strikeout by Dupree Jackson. 
who got the corner on that call on an 0-2 pitch. With two on and two out, back to the top of the South Dakota order. Number four, the catcher, Cohen Henry. And what Tad Johnson said, our pitcher's going to go after these guys. He really meant it. He did that with Henry in the bottom of the first where the team already had 4-0. And you know, that's not something that was overly significant. But at the same time, Henry's had a great knack of getting on base. So to get him out on a strikeout with four in the book already, four in the bank, that's the way to do it. If you look at it from a standpoint of a guy gets four walks up there, you know, you want to take that bat off his shoulder, make him prove that he can hit his way on, and he's proven that he can do that. Jackson ahead, a ball and two strikes. I love the idea of if you, Jeff Riley on his side and Tad Johnson, both aggressive, but especially Tad Johnson, whether it's on the base, base paths or talking about his pitcher going after guys, Aggressiveness. South Dakota leaves two on base and now four for the game. Bottom of the order for Missouri in the third, leading South Dakota 5 zip. This is the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War and Little League Baseball. We'll recognize that by saluting Vietnam veterans Saturday morning prior to the start of one of the championship games. It's a terrific tribute, and they have been putting out the word to all the teams and all the fans here to round up people they know that served in that war to make it to the stadium here at Grand Park on Saturday. Yeah, nice tribute. Top of the third for Webb City. Walker Sweet, Kenley Hood, Eli Miller. Please return the knockout ball to the nearest dugout. Thank you. Ethan Bruns has had better starts. Trying just to hold a fort at this point. And he starts this inning off well with a strikeout. Hoping his guys can start to put together some hits. Good start to the inning here. Fastball outside corner. Good, good spot by the catcher actually. Framed it, brought it in a little bit. Got the strike and the out. Pinch hitting for Missouri, number four, Trey Roach. Trey Roach will pinch it for Kenley Hood. Batting in the seventh spot. Facing pitcher Bruns. Roach's favorite movie is Million Dollar Arm. Did you see the movie, John? It's a very entertaining baseball movie. That's where they go to India in search of the next great pitcher. Ah, I did not see it. Ball and two strikes on Roach and one out in a third. Missouri up five. Back to Bruns on one hop. Eli Miller is the scheduled batter. See what Tad Johnson, the manager, decides to do here. As good as time as any to get his substitutes in. And they are going to make a change. And for Bruns out on the mound right now, Ethan Bruns, this would be perfect for him at 56 pitches if he can have a 1 2 3 inning. Help extend him a little bit more. For Missouri, number 12, William Hayes. Mandatory play is contingent on the number of players the team has at the beginning of the game. You've got 13 or 14. Both of these teams do. Each player must bat once. So William Hayes will step in. He was a pinch runner in the first inning.
Pitcher Bruns trying for a 1-2-3 inning. Coming up later, we'll switch over to the other region at 2 o'clock Eastern for Ohio and Illinois. And can somebody, anybody, stop the bats of Ohio? <laughs> I don't know. I was sitting back at the hotel last night looking at some numbers again and how impressive Ohio has been offensively. Well, we've seen that out of them before. I yeah. mean, they, that's a, probably the toughest state, I'd say, in my, it's my opinion, to try to make it out of to get here. Sometimes, even when they get here, they find it almost a little bit easier. Ohio has scored 32 runs in two games and has not batted in every inning to do it. As one of the games was shortened by the 10 run rule. Count is full. The ninth hitter would be next. Behind the plate view. Bounce towards second base and into right field. And now all the way to the fence. Hayes around second. Hayes around third. They're going to send him to the plate. And now he's going to go back. Third base coach and manager Tad Johnson was practically home plate. <laughs> and first he was waving, and then suddenly he was put on the brakes. And wisely so. You can tell Tad Johnson has been in that third base coaching box before. As you see Hayes out of the box in a hurry here. Grevin Good not able to field it cleanly in the outfield. And Hayes was round and he had his head down. He was going to dig for home, but he caught his head coach. Dad Johnson put the brakes on, got back just in time. John, it'll be an error on the second baseman, Bo Giblin. No error on Grevin Good. And here's Taylor as a pinch hitter. Liam Taylor at the plate. RBI situation. How about that? You get an error on the second baseman and you end up at third base. Yeah, no error on the right fielder. That's hustling around the bag there. And a ball that was hit pretty hard. You can understand why it got by the second baseman. Liam Taylor, who enjoys reading and loves to watch wrestling. With a ball and a strike. About set to turn the lineup over for the second time today as Cy Darnell, the leadoff hitter, is in the on-deck circle. Looking ahead to the South Dakota third, the two, three, and four hitters. Unbeaten Missouri, unbeaten South Dakota. The winner gets to the championship game Saturday. Towards center field and hit deep, but in play. Griffin Wildy right up against the fence, inning over. A threat for Missouri, but Webb City fails to score. Taylor got all of it, just didn't have any more than he needed. 5 nothing Missouri over South Dakota. 29, Ty Carter knocked to Bourne, will step to the plate. Spells his last name, N-A-A-K-T-G-E-B-O-R-E-N. Strike one. By the way, official scoring change as Hayes went all the way to third on the ground ball through the arms of the second baseman. That is an error to start with on Bo Giblin. And then Jason Grevengood was given an error in right field for not being able to pick up the ball cleanly as the ball skated to the outfield. No let up on the part of pitcher Dupree Jackson, even with a 5 0 lead today. It's coming right at him. And in any form of baseball, when your team jumps you out four or five early, biggest determining factor for victory, I would think, is how do you respond in the bottom of the inning on the mound? That's correct, and Dupree Jackson has been up to the task as he's been pretty efficient, 44 pitches now through 
three innings here. If he can stay on that pace, they can keep him in here for a long time because you don't see on this, let me call it moving day, on this Wednesday, baseball, that victory today gets you one step closer. You can't afford to pull a guy off the mound unless you are certain that you're going to move on to the next move on to the next day with a victory. Good at bat for Nachtaborn, who is able to reach on a walk. He had a good thing for all the four teams we'll see today. It's not getaway day because regardless of what happens, you're either coming back on Friday in an elimination game or you're headed Saturday in a winner take all. Marcus Phillips, two for five, a couple of runs batted in, three walks in the regional. Re-entering the game for South Dakota. Now running at first base, number 20, Griffin Wildey. Griffin Wildey who hits in that two spot. Nactaborn pinch hits for him. And after reaching base, Nactaborn comes off and Wildey now will run in that spot. Missouri with a five-run lead, four coming in the first. And in that first, Kyler Perry had the two-run hit to right field that was big. Tim, always interesting talking to these coaches and learning every year. It's not just about coaching so much baseball here. You have to manage like you do in the National League and Little League Baseball. They have matchups in the dugout. They know if a guy's going to get on as a pinch, pinch hitter, they're going to replace him with another guy in the dugout back in the starting lineup, or they're going to match guys up that say, okay, if I've got a defensive weakness, I want to have speed to pinch run. So there's a lot of factors. Up the middle, can they get one? They do on the tag. That ball got slowed up as it hit the pitcher Dupree Jackson. And as a result, Kyler Perry over from his shortstop position, able to put on the tag. Good play by Perry, by the way. Yeah, Marcus Phillips, boy. Watch him just a little step toward third. You were saying get the timing of that front foot down. He had it down there as he hit that thing right back to Jackson. Jackson, fortunately, that went off his glove. To be able to get the out at second base. Ethan Bruns in the fourth spot at an infield single in the first. Takes a called strike. 50 pitches now for Dupree Jackson. Big, strong, athletic, and firing bullets today. <laughs> what do you think, a good likeness? <laughs> Looks just like him. Ball and two strikes. Base runner in your screen, Marcus Phillips, who reached on that fielder's choice. Do you have one of those at home? No, but I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> They're impressive, aren't they? And big. Two, two pitch. Call third. Umpire Nick Boylan has a delayed call even though you can sometimes hear him before he oh, yeah. signals, so. Yep. You can hear a strike and then the arm comes out. Usually the batter knows as they uh -huh. walk away. Five strikeouts now for Dupree Jackson. Here's Mace, Mason Riley. Mason had a walk-off home run earlier this year. Favorite sports team, the Pirates. Should South Dakota get to Williamsport, he'll get a chance to meet his favorite team. Both the Pirates and Cardinals through Little League Baseball are going to make an appearance and hang out with the kids for a while. That's a beautiful thing. What a great thing for it is for those little kids. Really, it's an honor for the big leaguers to be there, I think. Now, the motivation for Missouri, besides getting to Williamsport, certainly, is that a number of its players are Kansas City Royals fans, but others are Cardinal fans, and those Cardinal fans would uh, certainly enjoy, mm -hmm. players that are Cardinal fans would certainly enjoy meeting some of their heroes. Ball four, two walks in the inning. 
Brings up Jack Riddell. Hit the ball well the last time, but right at center fielder Walker Sweet. John, another opportunity for South Dakota, which left two on in each. The first two innings, got to start cashing in. Right-hander versus right-handed pitcher. Strike one. Raydell's one of those guys that can turn it on for you. He's got that on switch the coaches were telling us. In a situation like this, he's been big before. And you're right. It's that time of game now, bottom half of the third inning, down five to nothing. Somebody has to find a way to get a clutch hit and break the ice for South Dakota. And they'll see if that extra batting practice and the emphasis on getting that foot out quicker in the cage and getting those hands a little more active will pay off for the South Dakota Pats, who their manager, Jeff Riley, says uh, haven't been alive yet. Bryce Darnell, a visit to, to the mound. I mean, Jeff Riley shouldn't feel alone in that category as far as not being, not feeling like his guys are hitting the ball well. So many good pitchers throughout this regional that we've seen this year. And all the coaches have complimented all of the staffs how good they are and how deep they are. Nash of Webb City, Tad Johnson. Mike Miller, the other coach, along with Darnell. Johnson's philosophy, one pitch, one at bat at a time. Not staring or dreaming of Williamsport yet. But a win here gets some closer. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, normally you hear one game at a time. He went deeper. One pitch, one at bat, and he threw in one game at a time. But you know, you can't, in the focus though, right? You can't tell me they don't know Williamsport <laughs> oh, is somewhere yeah. Yeah. on the horizon. <laughs> Full count, three and two. You can feel it, right? They know. Absolutely. They know how close it is. Commercials, I see them when I go back to the hotel. Ten days of glory. Again towards center field and dropping. Runner trying to score from third base, throw to the plate, he is safe! Marcus Phillips eludes the tag on a terrific throw from Walker Sweet. And it's 5-1. Base hit here, we said he's clutch at times, he's in. Watch Big E out there in center field as he fires it to the plate and really close play at the plate. Phillips trying to come around to score, racing back to home plate, and Phillips gets his foot in just in time. Sorry, that was Evan Freeman on the, on the throw. Two Walker sweep. And as I thought, they're going to take a review of this play, and I think it's close enough where they probably should. Another, another bang, bang play at the plate. And a terrific throw from Evan Freeman, too. Wow. In fact, it looked as if the throw beat Phillips. It's a home plate. Call stands, first one in the game for South Dakota. So despite a terrific throw from Freeman, and then catch by Walker Sweet, Phillips able to beat the tag. Runners down first and second with Riley at second. Mason Riley and Jack Riddell, who got the RBI hit at first. It's going to be a pinch hitter. Leo Huners will bat for Bo Giblin. Pinch hitting for South Dakota, number eight, Leo Huners. So Jack Riddell, who flew out to Evan Freeman in the second, this time had a base knock to him, and Freeman's throw. While it was on time, Phillips able to beat it home. Confident. 
Leo James Huners will be 13 years of age next Wednesday. 2-0. His ambition, by the way, John, is to be a MLB sports announcer. Good for him, it's a good goal. And now Dupree Jackson starting to struggle a bit. Three balls, no strikes. Should he lose him here, the potential tying run would come up. Base is loaded. Big chance for South Dakota. Little overthrow there. Everything is going to stay put, though. Mason Riley to third. Jack Riddell to second. Leo Huner's on at first. Bennett Dannenbring is up. And that's going to be all for starting pitcher Dupree Jackson. Tad Johnson, the manager, coming out and shaking his hand for a great effort that Dupree Jackson had today. He did what he needed to do. His team put some runs on the board early, and he kept them at bay for three, two and three, two thirds innings. So. And his job as he moves back out to the outfield spot. Max Dolverin is coming on, the right-hander. Try to get Webb CD out of trouble. It's going to be a pinch runner. Trace Eastman will run at second base for Jack Riddell. After throwing 69, 69 pitches, number 42, Dupree Jackson, now playing left field. Sioux Falls representing pitcher, both North and South Dakota here Silver. in Westfield, north of Indianapolis. And in fact, ended a 30-year domination of teams from Rapid City. Defeated a team from Rushmore, South Dakota, putting together 17 hits and winning that game 17-7. The other non-Rapid City team, you all to go all the way back to 1986 in Langdon, North Dakota. Pinch hitting for South Dakota. And I did that with 44 players in the league able to come up with some, with four teams and able to pick up a bunch of all-stars here and bring them in and what success they had. And they ended up beating Fargo, North Dakota, three to one. Fargo, the only representative in Little League from the North Dakota area, and they automatically advance every year to the championship game. So a big win for South Dakota the first time they get to the big game. Bennett Dannenbring, who's known as Bread Boy. And why's that? Enjoys bread. <laughs> Two-strike pitch. Three pitches, big strikeout, inning over. So Max Dover does the job. Jack Riddell, though, gets South Dakota on the board. Halfway through this late week game with Missouri leading South Dakota 5-1. Oh, this is the greatest game in the world. You have all the shapes, all the sizes. Uh, you know, and the thing is, uh, you, you get to play it every single day. For us, you know, you know when you talk about football, you know, you, everybody talks football. You only get it one one time a week. Whereas baseball, you don't really talk baseball. You play baseball. You can watch it every single day and see all every player that you want to see every single night. John, can you imagine facing uh, Max Scherzer in Little League? <laughs> Well, I don't know. Some of these kids in Little League today facing an equivalent to a 96, 97 mile an hour fastball. They're doing it. Lance Lynn, who had a fastball up in the low 80s for Bronzeburg when it made it to Williamsburg. Bronzeburg's just west of Westfield in the state of Indiana. It'll be one of the Cardinals on hand for the Little League champions from their regions. We go to the fourth inning. We're back to the top of the order. And Cy Darnell, who has singled and grounded out to third. Three for six in the regional. Favorite book, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. It's not a bad movie either. Dupree Jackson, Max Stover, who got the team out of a jam in the bottom of the third. 
would bat in this inning. And now for the game, South Dakota has left seven on base. High hop back to the pitcher. One away. All Little League World Series games on the ESPN networks, including ABC. Williamsport on the horizon. Less than two weeks away. Just like it started last inning, easy out. South Dakota had two quick outs to start the top of the third. Ethan Bruns now past the 70 pitch count. Faction Dupree Jackson, who started today. Mason Riley down at third base. Knows how quick Jackson and he's playing in on the grass, expecting him maybe to drop a bunt down. And because of that, it's lined by him quite easily out there. He's got a lively bat, second hit in this game for Dupree Jackson, third in the tournament. On base for the third time this afternoon. That's what the threat of a bunt will do to you. You can see Riley was in on the grass. And as a hitter, boy, you like to see that, especially if you can turn on it like Jackson can. Max Dover in the batter. Walked and scored, infield, ground out, and RBI. This Webb City team six outs away from losing its opener. Came back with a full run fifth to beat Nebraska. And Stoverin who salutes Yadier Molina. Behind two strikes. Two outs in the fourth. A bit easier for Easy e since that first inning. Gave up four runs in the first, just one since. And He's really settled down at the 77 pitch count now, getting a little bit closer to that 85 number. So we may see him for a little bit. If he can get a quick out here, we may see him in the fifth. Center fielder Evan Freeman. Bounce toward first base, and he's safe. Phillips bobbled the ball, couldn't get to the bag quick enough. Freeman can run pretty fast. Reaches with two outs. You know Freeman's quick going down the line. This ball was hit pretty hard to Phillips and had the runner going in front of him. That'll distract you as a first baseman and good call down at first base as Freeman able to beat it out. One little bottle is all it takes. You have to race to the bag and in this case Freeman wins. Errors have been a big problem today for South Dakota. They've had them in every inning but one. Prolongs this inning for Kyler Perry. One for two, and a base hit that scored two in the first. Glancing at the last of the fourth for South Dakota, bottom of the order, Grevin Good scheduled to hit, then Cohen Henry and Griffin Wilde. Boy, this inning, a lot like the third inning. Two quick outs to start it, and then an error prolonged the inning, and a run scored. Sorry they get out of that last inning, fortunately without a run being scored. And trying to do the same here. That run, the second run, or the last run they gave up was in the second inning. Strike three called. Ethan Bruns about reaching his limit. Gets out of the inning with no damage, but now five Dakota errors for the game. Missouri five, South Dakota one. Beginning in January of next year, Little League will join other youth baseball baseball organizations in adopting U.S. baseball's new USA bat standard. For more information on how this new youth standard will impact Little League, dial up littleleague.org forward slash bat info. Jim Barber with John Gregory, who spent some time in the Dodgers organization. Mike side today for two very important games. One in the Midwest, that's this one. The next one in the Great Lakes. At stake, a chance to get to the finals. 
Jack scrubbing good at the plate. Justin. And he'll turn it around to Cohen Henry and Griffin Wilde. South Dakota has made up one of that 5 nothing deficit. On the drop third, one out. And so in relief, Max Stovern. Two batters, two strikeouts, John. Nice strikeout there, but Walker Sweet was really impressed what he did as a catcher that time. Kept the ball in front of him, and he got out down the first base line to the inside part of the infield, and Hood down at first base gives him a great, great target to throw down there. Got out of the way of the runner. Nice job by Sweet behind the plate. Part of the success today to Webb City has been in its game plan to make sure Cohen Henry works to get on base, and they have done that so far. Henry, who came in, having reached base five times, four on walks, has to this point struck out twice. And he go, goes a long way for Henry when he sets the table for this team, able to score some runs. One of the reasons why they haven't is because he hasn't been on. Down the first base line, that's going to be foul. Pretty good job by Kenley Hood to make sure that it was in fact going to go foul, not hit the first base bag in fair territory. He held out to the end. Great decision to let this ball go. He knew he wasn't going to get the runner. Wait, wait, and not going to hurt you to let that ball just roll down the line and hit the bag. You're not going to lose anything. Good move. Not very often, but you'll see a major leaguer kind of waving, you know, with his hands to <laughs> blow on it a little bit, you know. Two balls, two strikes. Griffin Wildey would be next. One hop, second base. Cy Darnell. Two outs. One of the difficulties for South Dakota today, unlike the way Sioux Falls has played over the last couple games, is the inability to get the leadoff hitter on. This is the fourth inning, and so far, been able to do it only once. Hitting for South Dakota, number seven, Sully Schlimgen. Sully Schlimgen is going to step in here at bat for Griffin Wildey. <laughs> Sullivan Tate Schlimgen, who, like a lot of these players here, play more than one sport in addition to baseball, basketball, football, golf. Nice. By my. Uh, Arithmetic, that's a four-sport athlete. There you go. How many times have we seen highlights of these athletes that have played other sports talking about how they remember their little league days? And I think playing all different sports gives you a better variety. Later in life, you don't know what you're going to be. They have travel teams now, and it takes away from other sports, and that's a shame. Playing them all is what you need to do. Lined in the left field base hit. Kyler Perry tried to get a glove on it. Inning remains alive. As Schlimgen comes through as a pinch hitter for Marcus Phillips. And wouldn't South Dakota like to see after this hit by Schlimgen, Marcus Phillips launch one right now and make it a game. Well, he seems to be on right now. Like you said beforehand they were working on the cage and getting that left foot down for the timing of this Henry thing, well, if he times it up, base, he can definitely 20, get it out of here. The one thing we've seen him do is just hit line drive after line drive or back to the mound. He's kind of got that line drive swing. If he can get some lift on it, he's going to get it out of here. Griffin Wilde re-enters the game as a pinch runner at first base with two outs for Marcus Phillips. Very active with that bat, waving it and moving it around over home plate. Strike one. Phillips today over two, reached on the fielder's choice, scored in the third. Two for six in the tournament, couple runs batted in. Had a home run cut there on a high fastball, two strikes. Trying to will his team back into it. Max Stover, nothing in two pitch. Stolvern has ended each of his two innings of throwing with strikeouts. After four, it remains Missouri five, South Dakota one.
re-entering the game now. Pitch well, let's take this opportunity to recap the game. Didn't take long for Missouri to get it going. Perry with a two-run hit. Put them ahead for, well, at this point for good. Then the infield single by Kenley Hood scored yet another run. And the aggressive base running so far in this game. Put them up 5 nothing, and then finally a little bloop single to center field by Jack Riddell has scored the one and lone South Dakota run. Walker Sweet to start the fifth. Under kids say the darndest things. He was asked what would happen if he ever won the lottery, and he said, I'd probably just blow the money. <laughs> <laughs> Nectaborn now pitching. Ty Nectaborn. Ethan Bruns started, reached his pitch limit, or very close to it, with 81 pitches. Nectaborn, good change up, one out. Sweet out for the second time today. You know, you said he, that was a pretty good thing. He would just blow the money. At least he was being honest. You know, it's not like doing something crazy like building a wiffle ball stadium or something like that. <laughs> crazy. <you know? laughs> that sounded pretty logical to me. <laughs> uh, in case you just joined us, that was another wish of one of the players. If he hit the lottery, he's going to build a wiffle ball stadium. <laughs> <laughs> One hop, third base. No problem, Mason Riley. Two outs. Was it a dome? No, but I think you added that to uh, to the story. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I went back to my notes, going, "Wow, dome stadium. I'm there. <laughs> oh, well, maybe <laughs> I'm just building on it a little bit." <laughs> What's your motto? Never let the truth get in the way of a good story. I'm not gonna lie, that was my dream too. <laughs> I think it's Marcus Phillips who has the uh, wiffle ball dream. Yeah, I'm thinking already of how I can control the air conditioning to get some movement on the ball. Well, you know what? I mean, I, I don't, I don't think he'd have a problem used with to the... do that in Minnesota, didn't he? Uh huh. <laughs> Outfield change, by the way. Logan Boom, the left fielder, Jason, or Jackson Grevengood, switching places. Boom now in right, and Grevengood in left. And check that, Grevin Good now in center. Fly ball hit to right. Oh, a little snow cone right there, caught, inning over. Not easy for Boom, but he makes the catch. And for the first time, Missouri goes in order. 5-1 Missouri, bottom five. One bottom of the fifth. World Series in Williamsport coming up. Five, six, and oh for Missouri. One, four, and five for South Dakota. The winner of this game would be one win away from Williamsport. Representing the Midwest region. Time becoming precious for South Dakota. Ethan Bruns to lead off down to their last six outs. Strike one. Popped up and headed towards short center field. It's going to drop, base hit. Brunt's second hit of the game, and he's kind of hitting them where they ain't because he had that infield single. Back in the first. Now a short pop to center field. Good start for South Dakota in the fifth. Freeman coming from center field had to go a long way for this. Darnell, the second baseman, making his way out there. He looked, and I don't blame him, looked toward Freeman. Freeman's got some pretty good size out there. You want to make sure you don't miscommunicate and collide with Big E out in center field. Yep. 
By the way, let me correct something. Going back to the fifth on a ground out to third base, Ethan Bruns, who started the game as a pitcher, credited with that play at third. Mason Riley, who has struck out and walked behind 0 and 2. South Dakota representing both North and South Dakota states. It's not lost a game in tournament play. One out. Here's Jack Riddell, whose base hit in the third is accounted for the only run batted in in the game. Max Dober came on in the third inning with the bases loaded and got a strikeout as this one has popped a short right field. Good running catch by Eli Miller, two outs. And check that William Hayes with the catch. Pinch hitting for South Dakota, number nine, Trace Eastman. Trace Eastman will get a chance to bat here. Coach's son. Big fan of Carolina's Cam Newton, known as the T-Train. Back to the pitcher. Only needed to get one and looked at second. Then decided first base should be the better option. And Stover able to throw him out. And that's it. A lead, leadoff single in the fifth. And after five, Missouri five, South Dakota one. Leading off the top of the sixth. Top of the sixth, Missouri will start with number six, Tyler Marbot. Tyler Marbot. Tyler Scott Marbot, who for good luck chews on sunflower seeds. Little line drive over to Bo Giblin, one out. Looking ahead to the South Dakota Six in its last scheduled at bat. Boom, Grevin Good, and back to the top of the order, Cohen Henry. Winner to the Midwest Regional Championship game on Saturday. That would be 11 Eastern, 10 Central. You like to look at those glasses out there? I do. Second base, sun's flashing off of those things. That's a good look. <laughs> I never wore glasses. At all? No, not like that. I mean, they're comfortable now wearing them at the plate, out in the field. Used to be that just outfielders wore them now. Everybody out there in that infield has them on. Now the right side of the infield are wearing them down. Got a shortstop, has them on top of his hat, and none on the third baseman. There's the look. Got to get a matching. The it just white. looked like a player, doesn't yeah. it? There's a Phillips down at first base. Can't see the eyes. Intense. South Dakota defense of Mason Riley, Jackson, Grevin Good, and Logan Boom, left, center, and right. Third to first, Ethan Brunn. Ethan Brunn's Jack Riddell, Bo Giblin, and Marcus Phillips. It'll be the third baseman. Brunn's to handle that. Two outs. And pitcher Ty Nactaborn and Cohen Henry, the catcher. And there it is again for South Dakota. Quick two outs to start the inning. Right now, the four runs in the first inning, standing tall for Missouri. It's been a 1-1 game. Take away that first inning, and this thing's tied one all. Capree Jackson wears the Jackie Robinson number of 42. In this game, has been up three times, reached base three times. Couple of hits, a walk, two runs scored. And throughout this regional, Jim, a lot of times we have seen 
base on balls not come around to score and we have in, as we have in the past. A little soft line and a short. Jack Riddell, that's it. Easy inning for Nactaborn. Last chance for South Dakota. Bottom of the lineup, they need to turn it around and make something happen quickly. Tomorrow, two elimination games. Kentucky will be part of it, facing Michigan, 5 o'clock Eastern, earlier in the day, Iowa and Nebraska. And right after us, at 2 Eastern, 1 Central, John and I will be back with Ohio and Illinois. South Dakota hoping to extend the start of that game for a while, which means they'll need a big last of the sixth inning to come through. Last at bat, ball one. Logan Boone was batted once, has a base hit. He's two for four in the regional. Max Stover and on the mound. In a way, Stover's delivery reminds you a little bit of the starter Dupree Jackson. Mm -hmm. Starts off rather slow. And then certainly speeds up momentum as he comes to the plate. Yeah, and it kind of, I love the timing of it. It's just slow, sit back, sit back, kind of drop down on that back leg, push off, and explode to the plate. You're right. They look a lot alike. Sioux Falls has least has left at least one man on in every inning, nine for the game. Best scoring opportunity in the third with the bases loaded. And that's when Max Stoverin came on in relief and got a big strikeout to end the inning. Now 3-2 pitch. There's light for South Dakota in the last of the sixth. Still need a few more base runners to have a chance. South Dakota center fielder, 26, Jackson Grevengood. Jackson Grevengood's had a quiet afternoon, 0 for 2. One for seven in the regional. Here comes Jeff Riley to bring in a special pinch runner. Looks like Ty Nactaborn, who's been doing part of the pitching, will now serve as a pinch runner. Missouri three outs away. You almost have to describe it as an air traffic controller out there at third base. You got to yeah. coach third base, give the signals, think about the hitters, but you do have some guys behind you in that dugout that are helping you direct that traffic all over this field. Ball one. Trace Eastman now the special pinch run at first base. The winner of this game will face the winner of Friday's game, which will be an elimination game. There's some scouting going on, huh? Yep. Thought it was interesting, Jeff Riley from South Dakota, when we asked him about what he knows about Webb City Little League, he said, oh, not a whole lot. We don't do a whole lot of scouting because things change so much. and. Felt like we have a group of guys here. We're going to do what we do. I'm sure it's very frustrating to see the start of this game. And now time being called as Missouri with a bit of concern with a leadoff walk being issued and now 3-1 count on Nactaborn. Nice to have Bryce Darnell, the pitching or coach. Kevin Good, excuse me. To be able to come out to the mound and have a discussion you know, with your players out there, a coach at Southern Missouri State. He knows exactly what to say to these young men. A little bit different than coaching college, of course it is, but it's the same thing. Baseball is baseball at this level or at the college level. Your Sioux Falls, you need base runners. Are you taking a 3-1 pitch? I think so. Somehow, some way, you got your number nine guy up there that can stroke it, but you want to try to get to the top part of the lineup if you can. Runners at first and second with nobody out. Back-to-back -back free passes. 
That was a good question, Jim. Yeah, I think you do. You're definitely taking that. You're going to force him to throw an extra pitch, make sure he can throw a strike. And as you look right now, they're going to make a pitching change as Stovern was just really staring into the dugout as they're going to go, looks like, to their right fielder, William Hayes, to finish this thing off. Max Stovern may have lost a bit of his control, as good as he's been in relief. And William Hayes trotting in from right field. We come back, we'll set you up defensively for Webb City as it's trying to close out South Dakota in the bottom of the sixth. Won't be a big secret right now what William Hayes needs to do. The right-hander has got to throw strikes and challenge hitters because South Dakota is a base runner away from bringing the tie run to the plate in the bottom of the sixth. And the challenge for him is throwing strikes right away. Cohen Henry, a guy at the plate that's going to see a lot of pitches. Max Stover now in left, Dupree Jackson in right. Evan Freeman remains in center. Still in infield of Landon Johnson, Kyler Perry, Cy Darnell, and Kenley Hood. Hayes now pitching. Walker Sweet continues to catch. Here we go. Cohen Henry made walking a specialty here in the tournament, but today they have jumped on him, struck him out twice, and got him to ground out to Darnell at second. It's been a big key for Missouri pitching. Keep Henry off the bases. And they're up on him, one strike. Down the left field line, base hit. Gonna score one. Gonna score two. Runner going to hold it second, now headed to third. We got a game. Big clutch hit by Henry. A two-run triple. And now the tying run is coming to the plate for South Dakota with nobody out. Cohen Henry gets a pitch out over the plate. Doesn't try to pull it. He hits it the opposite direction. Drives it down the left field line out there, and two runners easily score. And now he's standing at third base with an opportunity once he scores to make it a one-run game. Griffin a Wildy at the plate. Wildy has batted just once today. That was back in the first when he walked. Well, as much as you want to glance down at the runner at third, He's not the biggest part of the picture. Getting another base runner on is. No question about it. You have to go after the hitter. Missouri's been very aggressive going after all their hitters. Trying to bunt again, failing to do so. Two strikes. What about that strategy there? I was kind of questioning the first time he did it, but moving the ball, maybe you're just trying to do something defensively, but I'm trying to drive it here and get that run in if possible and maybe find a way to get on first base. And he got hit. He's the tying run. Take a look back at Monday when South Dakota was in a situation where it had a chance to win in a walk-off and did just that. Bases loaded, two outs. Jacks at the plate. Jackson Grevengood right up the middle off Jack Koenig. Game over. 2-1 finish for South Dakota. Well. The Sioux Falls have some more drama in it. Boy, and that drama can start right here with the guy at the plate, Marcus Phillips. As we said before, he can hit it as hard as anybody in this entire regional, but hasn't been able to lift it yet. He's 0 for 3 today. Here's a situation where they'd love to see a deep fly to tie this thing up. Or actually win this ball game. Runner going to second base. Uncontested. Now you've got... The tying run at second base with nobody out. Second and third, 5-3 game pitch. One and one to Phillips. Base hit could tie it, a long one would win it. And now ball and two strikes. Setting began. When Logan Boom walked, then Jackson Grevengood walked, and Cohen Henry tripled the left field. 
right down the line. Dakota fans and its bench and a dugout alive and well. One two pitch. Base hit left field. That'll score one. Run around third and the game is tied. Now Phillips heading in the second is safe. What a rally by South Dakota. Jim, as I said before, Marcus Phillips has got that line drive swing. We've seen him hit the ball as hard as anybody in this tournament. Again, he just drills this thing by the defender, allows two runs to score. He just does not have that lift in it, but more importantly than anything, he rounds first base. He watches the throw, and because it went a little bit wide of the cutoff, man, he's able to slide into second base, and now he's in scoring position. And he is the winning run. So all four batters that have reached base here in the last of the sixth have scored. And a little comfort right now for relief pitcher William Hayes, who I know has to be disappointed. So is the catcher, Walker Sweet, who just kind of slammed his glove against his leg. But this is the resilience of this South Dakota team waiting to get those bats going. And with the flair for dramatic, having it happen here in the last inning. So now they're in position with Ethan Br uh, Bruns where they could bunt Phillips over to third base because there's still nobody out. No question about that. Phillips, with the speed that he has, any ball in the dirt, you can guess that he's going to be reading that and looking to get a good jump to third base. And right now, Jeff Riley, his third base coach, is should be talking to him about watching this release. If this ball's in the dirt, find a way. You don't want to make that out at third base, but you have to be aggressive on the pass. For Missouri, re entering the game now, pitching number six, Tyler Harvick. Moving from the mound to center field, number 12, William Hayes. Tyler Marbutt, number base, six, now becomes the pitcher. A four-run rally in the last of the sixth. William Hayes goes to center field. And Evan Freeman goes to third base. And Evan will have to be on the lookout for a bunt here. Winning run, second base, nobody out. I don't expect Bruns to necessarily bunt him over here. I think Bruns, with his stick in the number four spot, you're going to let him swing away, see if he can't find a way to get it through this infield who's playing deep right now. And anything through this infield with the speed of Phillips at second base, he's going to score. Would you bring the infield in a little bit closer on a short ground ball? And they're going to automatically, intentionally walk him right now, which good move. Now they got to force at third base, that may be a little bit easier to take away some of the speed, force it any of the bases right now. Brings to the plate Mason Riley, who's 0 for 2, and a strikeout. Of course, Cohen Henry was 0 for 3. First means nothing. Man at second, the game winner. The pitch. South Dakota with a win, going 3-0 and making... Good fastball, 1-1. One and one. Two. Fastballs, he swung through and it went back to the fastball and got Riley with the. So finally, South Dakota, after putting a two on, one out, 5 5 tie, last of the six. Here's a dilemma for the left. Base is loaded. Infield drops back now, force.
Bloom looks down at manager Jeff Riley. Torch shortstop. Over to first. Game over. Wow. What are you going to say to this South Dakota team?